the message that you want to deliver to Salt Lake City residents today? Uh, my talk is about the exclusion of women from history. Uh, the how women, even though they were producing stuff, got shut out of the public history. And people, they're, they're not, what they do is not recorded. Uh, and so people don't know the, uh, what women have done. Uh, and it's often kind of accidental that that some uh, work of women gets um, uh, saved. For example, in the Middle Ages, women, women's monasteries tended to save and preserve women's manuscripts and so on. But by and large, women get shut out, and that also becomes sort of the official view of, um, of male authorities, that mm -hmm. women are not part of the public official tradition. So I want to talk about how women were originally and have always been very active, how they got shut out, and how they are beginning to get incorporated into history. Is that exclusion um, a, a primary deficiency in the church today? Um, I think it's much less today because women are now very active in, in teaching and they're able to publish and get their materials record it, although in, in sort of, um, let's say, uh, official statements about church tradition, you still would rarely hear the name of women. <laughs> Women's ordination is certainly an issue that's facing many major religious traditions today. Do you think it's a matter of time? Um, I think there has been a, a lot of progress in the last hundred years, actually. Uh, that more and more groups uh, of mainly Protestant churches are ordaining women. Uh, but it's becoming much more common and much more known, uh, including women bishops. Uh, and so they're, you know, so th that's growing, but, but when there'll be really breakthroughs in some of those major uh, denominations uh, is uh, hard to say. Mm. Your impressions of Pope Francis? My impression is he's a nice guy, but he's not a radical. So you don't expect major change? Under I don't expect him to change laws. I expect him, what he's done so far and what he tends to do uh, is to advocate a kind of kindly service to uh, the poor and the marginalized. He hardly ever mentions women in terms of that. Uh, so women are much less uh, uh, advocated by him than the, his category of the poor, which presumably includes poor women, but I mean the point is he doesn't lift up women. Uh, and he tends to advocate for a kind of outreach to, to poor people but with very little actual changing of laws about anything. Your presence in Salt Lake has caused a bit of a stir. The Interfaith um, Council has decided to, to boycott your lecture today. Any response? I don't care whether they come or not. <laughs> Is that the kind of reception you usually get? No. Why? Well, because I think there there is there are certain kind of forces in the dominant church that has um, the bishop in particular uh, who don't like this conference because of the prominence not only of me but um, oh, women priests, Roy Bourgeois, and so on. So there's there's more than simply uh, my presence, but a, but a, a series of people who represent critique in the Catholic Church. So I think that has evoked uh, a conservative uh, Episcopal response, which is then pressuring this other group to do something. They're being told they have to do something, which is, of course, is not what they originally wanted to do. Um, but that's not, you know, that's not what I get most. I, I just came from a big conference on women as um, um, uh, Casbury uh, University in, in Southern California, and uh, you know, there was nothing about that. Mm. 
You're in your late 70s now. Sounds like uh, you still have your work to do. I still keep on. Well, it's not simply my work. It's the whole community's work, and that's continuing.